Hello, everyone. As you've heard, my name is Mark Zopluch, and uh, I'm having a presentation on the topic of uh, the Python API. And Blender is a really sophisticated piece of software. It uh, basically blends, literally, all of the tools in one, and you can do compositing, uh, 3D editing, animations, uh, video editing, basically anything you, you, uh, you can imagine with multimedia, you can do with Blender. But there is a catch to this. You, you take Blender, you start learning it, and there's like tons and hundreds of, uh, short, uh, of, of keyboard shortcuts. And it's really hard and tough to learn them all. And the nice thing about Blender's API is uh, that basically anything you can do in Blender, you can do with uh, the Python API. And sometimes even more things, because you can uh, basically touch the internal data inside of the Blender. So one of really nice things uh, about Blender is that if you point your mouse cursor basically at any element inside of the GUI, uh, it will tell you how do you access it in Python. So for example, if I wanted to uh, add an empty, uh, or wait, let, let's add a lamp and a sound, it will tell me that in Python, I can do it uh, using uh, th this operation. And what we will look at today is some examples of what you can do, why it's interesting, and uh, I think that many people don't know about this, that you can actually do it in a um, Blender, but every time I show to someone, they go all like, oh wow, I didn't know that, it's gonna make my life so much easier. So if you're interested in Blender, uh, these things may help you automatize, uh, automatize things you, uh, you need to do like with every single project, it, it can help you uh, b build new modeling tools. It can help you um, with animating stuff. And sometimes it's really easier to just uh, write a script for, uh, uh, to spin something rather than uh, edit the paths and use curves and stuff like that really inside of the Blender manually. Uh, so let's get to it. Uh, Blender has quite a lot of modes you can use it in. Uh, there are some presets to make your, uh, your job easier when you do some basic stuff. That's good. Uh, th that's what the default is good for. And they have for uh, uh, animations, compositing, stuff like that. So uh, we are going to switch to scripting mode. And now on this left side, I have a text editor like, where, I can run, uh, where I can write my scripts. I can save them into a file uh, for, it, for them to be persistent. And down here, we have a normal uh, Python, co uh, Python console, which is interactive. You can try stuff. But once you've finished writing it, it's lost. You, uh, you, you cannot open it somewhere else, cannot save it anywhere. But it's good for the uh, sake of testing. Like, what's this thing going to do? What's that thing going to do? So one very basic thing you can do uh, is using uh, the BPY module, which basically stands for Blender Python. It's already imported in this console. Uh, I'm going to make the text larger so you can read it. Can everyone in the back read it? All right, thank you. Uh, so. Uh, in this module, there, is, uh, there are a few categories uh, which make it uh, easier to orient inside this large complex API. And most of the time, you're interested in operations, the ops, the context, and data. The rest is for really specific things, but overall, you spend most of the time in these three sections. So uh, we can uh, take a look at ops, and there is category mesh. Oh, sorry. Uh, and mesh is basically what everything 
most of the things in Blender are made of. Whenever you build a, an object, it's made of mesh. So, for example, this cube right here, if I'm going to edit it manually, I can select this vertex, grab it, deform the cube, and do things to it. Uh, but uh, there, then there are really complicated meshes which have like thousands of vertices and uh, these meshes uh, are usually used for animating of people or uh, animals, basically anything you see in the animated movies. They are all uh, made of meshes, uh, which is quite mind-blowing sometimes when you see how realistic something is and it's all made of little points. And in mesh, uh, with operations for meshes, you can add new meshes, deform them, transform them. So uh, we are going to add a primitive cube And now we have a new cube in our scene. And all right, this is boring, right? Uh, this function takes arguments. For example, where to place the cube. So you can do, uh, uh, is it imported? It's not. So let's import random and for E in range, for example, 255. We are going to apply. Cube add. And over here, we can see what arguments this function can handle. And currently, we're probably interested in the position one, which is located right over here. Um, location, equals. all right, so it takes a tuple of three values, and these three values are basically coordinates in the space. Uh, the x, y, and z, uh, and z uh, values. For this, uh, the rule of right thumb is used, where the right thumb is the x-axis, the index finger is the y-axis, and the z-finger is the uh, z-axis. So it grows towards you, in most cases, in Blender not for whatever reason. Uh, so if we want to add a new cube, let's say we want a uh, Random, random int, and let's say we want uh, 255 divided by 3, so it's not as large, but it's more dense on, uh, on each other. And it might, this might see uh, like really dense, but given that there are three spatial dimensions, is going to be really far, far apart. So it actually helps to do it more dense so you can actually see the cubes not so far away from each other. And And now it should add more cubes for whatever reason it does not. <laughs> this is the problem with li life coding really. Whenever you want to do something, it just doesn't work. Um, so, uh, all right, I'm missing one over here. And now, there is missing one positional argument B. Excuse me. Oh, all right. From zero to the value. Uh, divided by three. Now 
let's do the four again and add the cubes. Invalid syntax. Oh, I have a zero in a. Oh, yeah. This thing. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for that. All right, this should work, right? And now we should have many cubes all around. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and actually, if you made this, uh, if, if you made these, for example, asteroids, you now have uh, uh, the asteroid belt in the space, and you can model uh, ships, and you have basically uh, a nice space scene without any work. So this is, for example, one of the use cases I would use this for. Uh, or if you wanted. Uh, just to, I don't know, make some random shafts for some horror movie, you, you, you could uh, g generate the uh, pattern quite randomly, so it actually feels like uh, the shafts are narrow and uh, random. So, uh, so I can imagine early lots of use cases in animations for, the, uh, for this. I'd love to use it someday, but uh, Blender is really a time-consuming thing, and uh, it's really quite hard to get to it, sit to it for 10 hours and create something, because it's the rule of one detail. You just sit uh, to do one small detail, and you lose the whole day. All right, so now that we have lots of cubes, we can go back to our two small cubes over here. I'm going to delete this one. Uh, uh, ne uh, another really useful thing in this API is that uh, it holds context. The BPY has this context section, which basically uh, manages the things uh, that are somewhere around there. So for example, the current scene, uh, selected objects, uh, th things you currently work with and you might use and, and find useful. So for example, when I t t uh, take context, I use my scene. This thing over here is called scene. Uh, in Blender, you usually per project create one scene where you put uh, objects and you work with them, animate them, All right? Uh, we are 10 minutes to the end. Uh, and uh, in, this, in the scene, it's reflected also in the API. So everything is in the scene, all of the objects, lights, and you can manipulate them through this. So for example, there is a whole list of objects. It's actually a dictionary, but you can uh, go also uh, through them using indexes. Uh, and you can go through them using names. So for example, here is cube 256. And um, like that. Uh, you, uh, for example, if you need to move whole scene to the left to, uh, for example, uh, create earthquake and move everything to the left and to the right, you can just select all the objects. So for example, if I wanted to select th this cube, I would just do dot sele uh, select equals true and some of those 256 cubes got selected, please believe me. Uh, another interesting thing is, for example, bpy.data, where you can manipulate basically the internals of Blender. So you can create mesh out of uh, individual uh, vertices which is quite useful when you want to do some shape that is easily described mathematically, but would be really terrible to create manually. 
So for example, if you want to create uh, a sine wave, it, it could be uh, out of vertices, it could be quite challenging to do by hand, but y y using the API and some mathematical module, you can just uh, add the vertices, connect them, add them to a single object, and then you, you've got a sine wave. So to demonstrate how creating of such an object uh, goes, uh, we can create, for example, a list of vertices. I'm going to zoom in, delete this cube. And let's create our vertices. Vertices are just list of individual points in space. So that means you create list of lists of values. Uh, I've tried to use tuples, but it seemed to crash Blender. So I'm staying away from that now because I don't want to crash my Blender currently. But I, I think it's cleaner to use two plus when you can, but since there is a risk to it, I, I'm going to use list. And let's say the first point of the triangle is going to be at the origin, which means where these axes meet, it's this cursor. Uh, next point we're, we're going to create on the right. And next point, let's create on the top. And now we have a normal py uh, Python object which represents list of lists of numbers. Uh, now we might want a mesh. So let's create our mesh, uh, BPY, data, meshes, new, and let's name it triangle mesh. Now, this mesh is empty. It doesn't have any data, it doesn't have any vertices, but since now we have our uh, list containing these data, we can, create, we can use this newly created mesh uh, and update it from Python data. And it even has nice uh, documentation string to it, which tells you what you can do. And it takes uh, the edges, faces, uh, so, sorry, uh, uh, so, sorry, vertices, edges, and faces. Uh, you might want to define edge in a case where you want two uh, points uh, connected with a single line. So for example, the sine wave could be an example of that, but for triangle, we only want one face and it will automatically get the edges uh, from, uh, from and to the points. And the, uh, the face is defined by the uh, indexes of the, uh, uh, vertices in the mesh, so zero, first, and second. And now there is a problem. Type int has no line. Oh yeah, it's a list of faces, so it has to be a list of lists of numbers again. And now the mesh is updated. Uh, but we still cannot see anything. And that is because we don't have any object in the scene. So first, let's create an object. Uh, again, in BPY data, we can, cr uh, we can take objects and create a new object, call it the actual triangle. And let's call it OBJ, require parameter. Object data is not specified. Oh, and it needs also the uh, object data, which is the mesh we've just created. So let's just give it mesh. Now there is an object, the actual triangle, somewhere in the memory. 
but we can see it like that. We want, we want it in the scene. So we take our scene, we use of our context because it's, it's this particular scene we are working with right now. And uh, we use the scene, objects, and link it to it. And now we give it our object and the triangle is there. So, this was a nice demonstration of the Python API, I think. Any questions, anything I should show b b before we finish? A more complicated sample, how to use the M API. Did I understand that correctly? Uh, uh, so far, I haven't used the API in any complicated way uh, because Blender is just my hobby and sometimes I do a render, for example, my wallpaper here is what I've made by hand, but uh, I've had a video sometimes somewhere where, where I created planets that were orbiting around the sun and it looked really... Uh, um, Nice, so I think that's, for example, something uh, you, you can use it for. But I don't have it here, I'm sorry for that. Right, so I think that's it. Uh, f uh, if you wanna chat about the API, see some other examples, or uh, just wanna have a chat, feel free to stop by. Thank you. <laughs>